Yeah. One of my thoughts is, or one of my questions is if you are new to kind of posting content on LinkedIn and you're trying to yeah. keep some sort of regular cadence going so that, I don't know, because I think a lot of people get that little motivation mm -hmm. to do it and they'll be like, wow, I've got four posts that I know are so cool. And then you do it for a week <laughs> and then they forget about it. So how do you, I guess, continue the motivation and, and plan out a content strategy or is it even that planned out? Yeah, it's not that deep, but I would say just if you were, if I ask any seller right now, listening to this podcast, tell me what are your top five, the top 10 questions you get, scrap that top five questions you get on a day-to-day -day basis. When you talk to prospects, if you, if you know, go for the whole week, what's the five common questions you're going to get? They'll probably, you know, about your service, they're going to share, rattle those things off. I mean, I'm not talking about how much does it cost or anything like yeah, that, yeah. but like, you know, Particularly, like you know, if you're selling software, like, does it integrate with this? How does this work? You know, in the this in this environment, is this going to be effective for us to use your type of engagement tool? Like, I mean, there those you get those. Those are the kind of posts that you might want to look at, and then also think about the five common problems that your ideal customers have or that they might face. And if you can't figure those out, go to the job description. So if you sell to HR managers, just go to Google and just search HR manager responsibility. And you'll see probably like that, you know, top 15 things that the job posts require. That's going to be the common thing you probably see amongst the, most of the, the job posts. Um, the, so what you want to look at is then identify what some of these how can I help with this? Could I identify something around this? So maybe like, you know, if the HR manager is to, um, you know, make sure we have relevant training or make sure that we have, uh, you know, they, they're they responsible for, um, I don't know, onboarding new clients, uh, new team members. Like, so you may be able to f identify and say, well, onboarding is a, you know, as a beast. I know that because some of our clients mention it, then write that down. Also look at your case studies. If you go back into your case studies on your website, or if you don't have any case studies, look at the, you know, well, let's focus on cases. If you have case studies, look at a case study and see what are some of the problems, common problems people had. And then now you can go ahead and do a post on that. Um, mm. And then the same idea when it comes towards your sales force, no matter what deals go into the loss ops or any of the deal one and look at to see what was the first email, the first message that was in there, the first note. And you'll probably see the sellers posted, spoke with Donald today. He mentioned that they're interested in our, you know, IT management services because of blank reason. Take that reason and that becomes a post that you can write about. So there's so many different ways that you can do it. And also you hear chatter. You can also follow hashtags on LinkedIn. Yeah. So if I'm in an IT world, I'm going to put in the hashtag managed services and I'm going to see what are some of the chatter going on or what are some of the common things that I can then post on. And it's cool to share your ideas. So that's ed education. The other side is just like you and mm. people get, LinkedIn has been trying to not necessarily break away from their this this notion, but they want people um, not break away from the professional notion, but also let people know you can share stuff about your life. Sarah, the best post that I have every single month or every couple of weeks, and I didn't much purposely do this, is with my son. Um, everybody just loves this kid. And it's <laughs> Fresh Cut Friday. So we go get a haircut. So now I'm looking, I need a haircut. So probably this week I'll get a haircut. But I always post, you know, end of the week on a Friday post, you know, hey, look, little man and I just got our fresh cut. And it's amazing how people interact oh, with that so client, yeah. friends. Yeah. And it's cool, but it's you. It's not only yeah. talking about sales. It's not posting a podcast episode. It's not teaching sales stuff. But there's once every, every couple of weeks to do that, it gives them, let them know who you are as a human being. And anyways, that those are some ideas that you can easily take. And then also the opinions, like, like you can take or lessons, life lessons. Maybe you went to... Um, to Starbucks and you went and bought some, you know, coffee and somebody was really like, somebody was really patient with you. Um, you know, what if you were to take a picture of that Starbucks cups or take a picture of, you know, there's something, uh, I don't know, a quote and say, you know, I went to Starbucks today and this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. We need to do more mm -hmm. of this. How can we apply this in our industry, in our IT world? Um, here are three things you can do to become more patient with others around you. Blah, 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 blah. What are your thoughts? What's some things you do to be patient, especially in a hustle and bustle environment we live in? There's a post mm -hmm. and it's amazing that what can happen with that. So there's so many different ideas.